Um, hi guys, my name is Dmitry, I'm working in Logify. Um, today I'm going to speak about unit testing in React and Redux. Can you please raise your hands who is doing unit testing in React and Redux, or just in React, whatever? Okay, like 50-50. Um, yeah, I will tell you story of, of, of our team. It's not like how you should do it, but maybe you can learn something. Um, we have started a year ago uh, with a good decision to rewrite the part of our application uh, entirely by using new technologies and implementing it as a single page application. Um, it should be a new application, but there are a couple of requirements. The thir first thing, we have decided that we will not rewrite application entirely and we will not switch user directly, but we would like to embed the new application into old ones, so user will still use the old one and some pages we will be able to replace with the new, uh, let's say, components inside. Uh, one of the requirements also was that this system needs to work good with a continuous integration and continuous deployment because we have different environments and we want to be able to make something like feature toggling, uh, etc. And new project should be long-term support. So it's not for one weekend. As a technology stack, we have decided to pick um, React and Redux plus ECMAScript 6 and for bundling we decided to choose a webpack. <coughs> and one of the key uh, things was that we have decided to make tests from really, really beginning, like from the first day. And for the testing stack, we've decided to pick uh, Mocha, Karma, and Expect, which is basically the default setup if you, you are starting to write on Webpack, React, and Redux. And in, uh, I would say, a couple of days, we already have created the first test, and they was running. But then, then next commit, just break them. And we have realized that we have a problem. <coughs> we have started to search the way how we can prevent one developer to build tests and second one to break them. Uh, the first idea was that we can run our tests on the CI, so when the developer push the code, he will not be able to break anything. But unfortunately, it doesn't work. People still commit and break your environment and don't check in it. And we've started thinking about any other solution, like, okay, we would like not to check after, but check before we are actually merging the code. And uh, I think almost all the code stores, such as a GitHub or GitLab, they have things called pull request checks. Basically what it allows you, it allows you to connect your continuous integration with the code uh, storage and check uh, certain checks, for example, running tests and in general check that project is built for each pull request. Uh, right now we are using this and basically we have no problem with uh, committing that code or merging that code. Well, except you are not admin and you are pressing this button at evening. Um, yeah, so we had the initial setup, but then we've noticed that no one actually wants to write tests. We have the test setup, we have 10 tests, and nobody writes single tests more. Um, yeah, we were thinking how to motivate each other in the team. And the first thing that we have tried to do is to search cool things about the testing. Why we should write tests, how it can help us. Um, we've started, and recently we've started finding um, new things which are really cool. First, that we have realized that we can actually ensure that code is works as expect. Yeah, developers, when, when developers write code, they think that they know how it works and it works as expected, but not really. And it's much easier to ensure by writing tests. Another thing that we have noticed that while we are doing refactoring, it's much easier to keep code in the functional perspective like as it is. Uh, by running tests. So you can see that code is doing the same that it was doing before, even after refactoring. 
One of the key features also that we have noticed is that we are not pushing that code anymore. This is also good that tests are forced us to write better structured code because it's really hard to test big functions and one file with uh, 1,000 functions. So we've started to structure our code better, uh, split into small parts which are easier to test. And also, unit tests help us uh, a lot to understand code of each other just by reading tests because you see the usage of the code, not the code itself, even if it's complex things, you, you can get it easier. Um, but the thing is that even after all of those motivation discussions, still nobody writes any single test. So is there any other way? And that was the thing that we have decided after another long meeting that we will start to require each other to uh, write tests for the new features and new code. Um, and then we've got new question like, okay, should I test all my code that I'm trying to make a pull request? And uh, after another discussion, we have created the list of things that we think that it's mandatory to test for our project. Um, for us, we decided that it's mandatory to test reducers, action creators, components, business logic. And at the beginning, we decided that we shouldn't and we wouldn't test React. And I will explain later. Uh, for reducers, as far as you know, reducer, it's a function. Uh, it's a pure function which have uh, two parameters as a state and action, and it returns new state. So the first thing that we decided to test is initial state because you want your reducer to return the well-formed shaped state and actually action handlers itself. It's, it's super easy to test. Here is the example of test. Basically, we are forming the initial state, executing the uh, reducer function and asserting the returned value. It's easy because it's pure function, so it doesn't have any side effects or not changing world from outside. Uh, for actions, uh, for us, we, we, we can uh, differentiate the simple action creators, which are just functions which are returning new object and composing and returning, uh, and asynchronous action creators. So those are functions which are asynchronously doing uh, producing of new uh, actions. Um, for uh, asynchronous action creators, we have decided to uh, not to uh, not to test the function calls, but instead test real functions inside the store. For this purpose, we've decided to use uh, Redux Mox Store, which is like have the same API as Redux has, uh, but much simpler and lighter, and it allows you to make tests easier. Um, yeah, and the last point that we decided to test was Redux connection components. Basically, we have decided to make it easier to test, to split map state to props and map dispatch to props to separate file, which we called mappings. Um, it's much easier to test because those are also functions and you can move them somewhere and test separately uh, aside from the, the smart component itself. But this is actually the old way and the new fashioned way is to use selectors and test them. Uh, this is so new, so it was added like two weeks ago, I guess, by Dan Abramov, so we can just read the documentation. This way it's much easier because you're splitting your map state to props and map dispatch to props and um, moving them into different uh, files and it's much easier to test. Yeah, and one uh, also important uh, point is to test all the business logic. That was also the mandatory thing that we decided. If something is not in React or Redux, we need to test it because most of the time, it's also pure functions. If they are not pure functions, they then especially we need to test them because they are changing the world from outside and we need to ensure that they are working as we expect. Okay, so uh, 
we start to write tests, but like uh, they are mandatory on review, but it's better to write less tests just to pass review because you don't want to create a lot of code, etc. And we start thinking how to make tests fun. Uh, the first thing that we have found, uh, we have added the graph of the test execution, and then we start to compete with each other by numbers, who is writing more tests, and that really works because people are working like this. They like to compare numbers, always. Um, another thing that worked, uh, at certain point we had fixed code coverage. It's about, it's differentiated, but more or less it's stable. And we have decided that from this point, we are requiring this amount of code coverage. So as soon as you're uh, writing new code, you should cover it with the same percentage. And it's not that easy to cheat in these kind of things. So we've started to write tests. Um, but immediately, we've got a lot of questions. We don't know how to write tests. And we decided to create a unit testing manual. Basically, it's a wiki page where we are trying to describe all the naming conventions, uh, structure of our tests, how to write tests properly, where to place them. Uh, we have tried to show examples of testing of each part for reducers, for basic action creators. Uh, and the best part is FIQ. As soon as you have a question, you are adding this question there. And when you, are fi uh, you found the answer, you are just putting answer there. So next person will just read it here and uh, will not spend time on this. So yeah, we are writing tests for each pull request and it's cool. But we have found that test execution is really slow. Especially locally, when you start to run tests, it needs to create a build, it needs to create a bundle. And for us, bundle was super slow. It took about the three minutes just to build and run tests, uh, the initial build. And we've started to search, is there any way to minimize the time of the execution? And we have found that uh, the weak point is a resource uh, processing. So basically, the hardest part for Webpack is when you are uh, using CSS imports or less or SAS imports. It needs to pre-produce it, uh, pre-process it, and then build the bundle for styles. And we have realized that we don't need any CSS or images or anything else, uh, any kind of resources except JavaScript in our testing. Uh, bundles. So we have created a separate webpack config for tests, which we are running, uh, th this build we are running localhost, which is uh, surprisingly twice faster. Um, yeah, we was writing tests, but we really want to do it easier. We have found that uh, testing things like Redux it's uh, really uh, duplicating code. <coughs> so what we decided to do is we moved uh, similar parts to things that we call base tests. It's basically the number of tests which are parameterized and you are able to generate uh, tests by, by running this function and passing your reducer. Um, that's how we are generating basic tests for all our reducers, for all our simple action creators. And yeah, we are just trying to create more things to make it easier to test for us. That's cool. We are writing tests for React, uh, sorry, for Redux. We are covering all of the business logic, but what about React? From the first day, we've tried, honestly, tried to test React, but for those of you who know how to test React, who was trying to test it with the utilities uh, from the React library itself, it's just nightmare because the amount of code that you are producing just to prepare the component to render it and to test it is like twice bigger than the component itself. And we've started to search any kind of utility to simplify our life. And fortunately, week before we've started, Enzyme was released, uh, 
by guys from Airbnb. This library, I guess, it's right now like official utility functions uh, for testing React, and uh, it's super easy. We've set it up in like a couple of minutes, and we have written first test. It's much, much easier to write tests. It's way cleaner. But then we had another problem that we've started refactoring and reorganizing our code. At a certain point, we have realized that we had problems in our component organization, and we've started to move to split components from one to two, then merge some components, move, make one of them smart, another is dumb. That's why we decided to stop at that point uh, to write any tests. And finally, about a month ago, we have finally stabilized our structure, our code structure, our component structure, and we've decided to start writing tests again. As soon as we start, we've got a question. OK, should we test all the components that we have, like all 200 components? And honestly, no, because basically you need to, to check if component is uh, contain any business logic, then you should test it. If it's a simple functional component, then probably you shouldn't test it because you will just duplicate your code. By writing component and writing tests, it will look sem the same. So there is no reason. And another question was, OK, component is pretty big. Should I test the whole component from beginning to the end? And here are things that we have decided to test.